Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for the media speaks. It is the much-awaited, highly revered, never ever even remotely political, politically correct dunce cap of the month award show. And uh, what is the dunce cap of the month award, in case you've just tuned in and you found this show out of nowhere? Uh, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show highlights the amazing amount of stupidity that is extant in our world today. And usually, usually, not always, it's our leaders or somebody that uh, pretends to speak for us, and uh, including the winner this month. And I'm going to get into all the stupidity. I promise you on a stack of Bibles, you don't want to tune out. I'm going to give just a few seconds to talk about 9-11 because I'm going live here at the morning of 9-11 and I would be considered the worst political commentator in all of human history if I didn't say something about it. However, I don't think copious amounts of speeches and words need to be said every year. Here's what we need to focus on, friends, and this is the only thing I'm going to say about the entire issue. I'm not going to talk about how buildings might fall, free fall by dumb luck, even though nothing hit them. I'm not going to talk about the people that said they saw explosions. I'm not going to get into any of that. Everybody else has done it, and they've probably done it better than I could. Here's what I'm going to say. Why don't we spend the next year fighting to get the pages of the 9-11 report that is kept from us released? Why don't we do that? Why don't we all agree, Republican or Democrat, left or right, up or down, straight or gay, black or white, black lives matter, white lives don't matter, all of us, focus on getting the pages of the 911 report that we're not allowed to see released. Can we do that? How's that? That's what I have to say for 9-11. Everybody else wants to hear about the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. And, friends, we've got it. I swear to God, we've got dumdies such as you have never seen, and we're going to get into them here. Steve Watson wrote this in InfoWars. Little terror. Get ready, guys. Here comes fear. Airport security confiscates kids' fart blaster toy. Now, maybe it's me, because I'm incredibly childish. But my heart breaks for the kid. Imagine being a little boy and not having the fart blaster for when the fat guy sits down beside you. Or maybe there isn't a fat guy beside you. Maybe you just want to do it to your mom every time she moves so that everybody else on the plane thinks that she just farted. I will never get too old to think that that's hilarious. Um, they took the kid's gun. Now, why, why am I doing a show on this? Because it's part of a bigger picture. We can laugh about it. But we can also realize if we have our airport security focusing on everything that is somehow related to a gun, we're missing it. We're missing it. Like Ron Paul said, you can't find a needle in the haystack if you keep throwing in more hay. Do I think it's a good idea to leave a great big plastic toy gun go through unchecked? No, it'd be a good idea to check the fart blaster to make sure nobody did anything to it to the best that we can, yes. But come on! This is why, this is why they made the first show out of the, uh, the, the ones that are coming here at the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Add fart blaster to the list of ridiculous objects deemed to be a threat by airport security. Not kidding, it's real. A three-year-old boy had the item, a gun-shaped toy that features the popular children's film Minions, confiscated by security officials at the Dublin airport who said that it posed a threat. Maybe it posed a threat to anybody offended by potty humor. The security officials flagged the item after seeing it on a baggage x-ray machine. So they couldn't just open it up and check it. No, you should see this boy. He looks like he's going to die. He looks so sad. The officials contended that the child was not allowed to fly with the toy, which looks like one of Alex Jones's megaphones <laughs> more than it does a gun, under the rules of governing replica weapons. 
He was devastated. He looks devastated. He was devastated. He was very well behaved and very polite. And he said, of course, and left it. But he is very upset and doesn't understand why he's sharing his toy with the man. It was such a shame, said the boy's mother, Adair Fitzpatrick. If you look at it, it's just ridiculous that it could be considered a weapon. I mean, would you shake in fear if I pointed a minion's fart blaster at you, she told reporters. Well, I guess that'd be she asked reporters with the London Telegraph. It looks like a megaphone. It doesn't look like a gun. I said to the man, it can't be construed as a weapon. And he said, I know, but the button looks slightly trigger-like. I was fuming at the time. I just had to say, I'm so sorry, Leo, and walk away. This is this is our world. This is what, this is what we've done. Uh, 14 years ago, 9-11 happened. And now we're taking fart blasters off of children in the name of aviation protection. It doesn't in any way resemble a weapon. I understand strict airport regulations, but can common sense or compassion not be employed? It was laughable, Mrs. Fitzpatrick added. Well, I would say so. And we've talked about how the TSA has done this forever. And, of course, they're moving into train stations and everything else. Yeah, that's happening all around us. Um, here's another one. A school district responds to Confederate flag flat by banning all flags. <laughs> because some people might be offended by the uh, Confederate flag, and because some people who are not offended by it may wear it, the best thing that you can do is ban all flags, even the American flag. Because taking more rights away always leads to more freedom, according to this school, which is why they're mentioned at the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. And they only get dumber as we go, friends. In an act designed to prevent anyone from any background being perpetually offended, a school district in Tennessee has declared that all flags and banners are banned, even the stars and stripes. Ironically, in an attempt to protect the feelings of the always but hurt minority, Dixon County, so look up Dixon County School, look them up on Facebook, look them up online, contact them, call them, let them know that they're ridiculous, that's why I do these shows. They have ended up pissing off most people there by declaring that U.S. flags cannot be displayed on school grounds because the Confederate flag, or something, the author writes. That's about it. Students were warned that they would be kicked out if they brought any flag with them to the school. The decision was made based on some actions and behaviors of students displaying banners behind a vehicle. It's not an unpatriotic act by any means, no, because we have a number of ways in which students do learn how to be patriotic and express American pride. Yeah, like flying the American flag. I swear, the dunce cap of the month, man, I, I always think I can't find anybody dumber than I did the month before, and every month I find people even stupider and stupider and stupider. This is said by the idiot Dixon County Director Student Services, Steve Sorrell, S-O-R-R-E-L-L-S. Make sure you contact Sorrells and tell him that he's an idiot. He shouldn't be allowed to be a dog instructor. We have the responsibility to help our students understand citizenship, proper respect for the flag, and what that might look like. No, if you can't fly the flag, then I would argue that you are not, Mr. Sorrell, showing proper respect to the flag, you moron. Uh, friends, a Daily Caller, I have here a, a, a story that's just... Giving more to some people means fairness, because that would even the playing field. Does that make any sense to you at all? Didn't to me. That's why it's part of the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. WAPO writer, black votes should count for more than white votes. <laughs> now, I'm all for blacks, whites, Asians, and anybody else getting one vote. Really, I am. But if it evens the playing field so that since blacks are a minority and this writer wants to give blacks more votes because there are more African Americans than there are white people, then let me ask you a question. 
how many votes would an Indian get? Like from India, the country India, because there's less Indians than there are African Americans. So we can give them a lot more votes. Come to think of it, how many people from Madagascar? Hmm. Gonna have to give them a whole ton of votes. What do we have more of? African Americans or uh, Russians? Because we may have to give the Russian heritage a crap ton of them, because I've only met like a couple in my life, I'm just saying. Listen to this insanity. A writer over at the Washington Post has a bold new proposal he believes can heal the American racial divide. Empower blacks by making their votes count more than those of other races. <laughs> racial reconciliation is impossible without some kind of broad-based systemic reparations, writes Theodore R. Johnson a former White House fellow and current Ph.D. candidate in law and policy at Northern University. So not only does he get mentioned in the dunce cap, but this university, Northern University, gets mentioned as well. If a, if in a peculiar answer can't fix the structural advantage, and it can't, but what can? The answer, Johnson argues, is simple. Weighted voting where black votes count for more than white votes. Specifically, Johnson suggests giving each black person five-thirds of a vote to reverse the old three-fifths compromise written into the U.S. Constitution. That'd be fine if anybody was still alive. None of the people that oppressed black people then are still alive. It has nothing to do with it whatsoever. This has to be one of the dumbest ideas in all of electoral ideas ever given in the history of elections. As Johnson gleefully notes, ignorance is bliss, counting black votes more than others would significantly alter any elections in the U.S. And in the 2012 election, several th southern states with high black populations, such as Mississippi and Georgia, could have swung over to Barack Obama's column and their recent Senate races would have been decided by Democrats' favor as well. Right, let me ask you a question then. If the person is has an, a black mother, say, but the father is a white guy from the South and 200 years ago his family owned slaves, then does that person get the same amount of black stupidity in action friends that's why i'm being facetious kurt nemo infowars bernie sanders blames financial elite for economic crisis friends bernie sanders is a socialist admittedly so therefore what he would do would empower people to be much more devastating to inequality than we are now. Socialism never works because it always involves people not wanting to do anything and getting everything. That's why. Vermont, and I mean that in terms of government. I've seen it work in small areas like uh, medical care, and I've heard of people having little socialist things where everybody pays in and everybody's covered. That kind of thing works. It doesn't work as a governmental structure. Vermont Senator and Socialist Bernie Sanders told CNN Sunday the financial elite on Wall Street are responsible for the destruction of the middle class in America. People do not understand why the middle class of this country is collapsing at the same time as almost all of the new income and wealth is going up to the 1%, Sanders said. He also said the business model for Wall Street is a fraud. So the idea to fix it is socialism. That's why he's being mentioned. CNN's Jack Tapper tried to get Sanders to comment on the flagging campaign of Hillary Clinton, but he zeroed in on the economy and climate change. So now we're going to tax the living hell out of you for climate change, which isn't happening, to help you. That's not going to help the 1% at all. It's not like Al Gore is not part of the 1% who is invested up to the neck in carbon credits. No. Great idea, Bernie. Commenting on Sanders' remarks, Zero Hedge noted the Wall Street will never change until serious jail sentences are handed out for serious fraud, as opposed to taxpayer bailouts. 
The trouble is, he it would cost so much to live in a socialism environment like he would want that anything that would be saved from hurting the 1% would simply make a different 1% in a different sector. And we would have the same problems in the same way. That's what socialism always brings, and that's why he got mentioned on the Dunce Cap of the Month show. Friends, I have three stories left, including the winner, and the stupidity level on these is beyond what anybody would ever know. Before we get into them, I want to ask everyone to look at Sticker Junkie's website, StickerJunkie.com. They made these stickers here. They're amazing. They're my band stickers. Go to the correct views at hotmail.com and I'll make sure you get some. Sticker Junkie. Go to stickerjunkie.com when you want to get your stickers made. Whatever your design is, let David Lake know what it is that you're going to have done and let him know you heard about it from the correct views because when you do that, you're going to get a special discount on your stickers and they're going to look amazing like these do. Um, Moving on, this is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, one of the most awesome writers extant today. Poetry, check. Political commentary, check. Fiction, big check. Excellent writer, often... Uh, Oftentimes, and I think readers don't know where to go to find people that aren't on the big names. And I, you want to check out Mike McLaughlin. You'll be happy you did. The Daily Beast. I'm telling you, this could be... I want people to answer this question if maybe I've given the Dunce Cap of the Month award to the wrong person. Because I was really leaning hard on these last two that are coming up before the winner. Petraeus, as in former General Petraeus, use Al-Qaeda fighters to beat ISIS. Now, many of you may not know this, but in the 1980s, America funded Al-Qaeda because we were involved in the Cold War with Russia. By funding Al-Qaeda, it led directly to the terrorism that we are seeing today. So General Petraeus' idea is to give Al-Qaeda money again, only instead of fighting the Russians, they will now fight ISIS, which will do what? It will empower Al-Qaeda all over again. Listen to this. To take down so-called Islamic State in Syria, the influential former head of the CIA wants to co-op jihadist from America's arch foe. Wait till you guys see this winning hat. Members of Al-Qaeda branch in Syria have a surprising advocate in the corridors of American power. Retired Army General and former CIA Director David Petraeus. He wants to fund the people that were partially responsible for 9-11. Do you understand that? I'm not saying that America had no role in it, but I'm saying that we know that Al-Qaeda had a role in it. The former, and, uh, and largely due to the money that we gave them in the 80s. The former commander of the U.S. forces in Iraq and Afghanistan has been quietly urging U.S. officials to consider using so-called moderate members of al-Qaeda's Nusra Front to fight ISIS in Syria. You see, I guess al-Qaeda only cuts off 400 heads a day, whereas ISIS cuts off 920 heads a day. So you have to fund al-Qaeda because they're moderate. I can't even believe that I'm talking into the camera and that this is a reality. The heart of the idea stems from Petraeus' experience in Iraq in 07, when as part of the broader strategy to defeat an Islamic insurgency, the U.S. persuaded Sunni militias to stop fighting with Al-Qaeda and to work with the American military. Yeah. So they could steal the weaponry and use it against us. This man, I'm so happy he is no longer leading anything. This man should not be allowed to lead the charge to take out an anthill. This is stupidity such as I have never seen. It said, uh, Petraeus declined a request to comment on, the, on his views to the Daily Beast. 
such as how precisely the U.S. would separate moderate fighters from the core members and leaders is unclear. We give him money and hope we vetted him right, right? Nothing could go wrong here. It didn't lead to the terrorism that we're seeing today, no. General Petraeus wants to fund the people that led to Al-Qaeda. The last time we fund, I mean, led to 9-11. The last time we funded them, of course, it did lead to 9-11. That right there, friends, is stupidity such as unimaginable. Did it win? I, I, I think maybe it should have, but all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you people will think this one should have won. I, you know, Christelle, I fear that I've lied to you when I married you. I, I told her that I had no children. Wait, you don't have any children. I do think, in fact, I, I have a child. I think he's 12. I think, oh, he, I think he's 12. No. And, uh, yeah, um, this is from abc.net.au. I may have to find out who this woman's mother is. And if I know her, I may have a son here. Listen to this. Boy Trips accidentally puts his fist through a $2 million in Thailand painting oh in goodness, Taiwan. you do have a son. I do have a... Ladies and gentlemen, I have a son. A 12-year-old boy has accidentally punched a hole through a centuries-old $2 million Italian oil painting after he tripped and fell into the piece that was on exhibition in Taiwan. What is my kid doing in Taiwan? The painting, entitled Flowers, by Italian artist Piallo Popora, dates back to the 1600s and is part of a collection of 55 artworks on show in the country's capital, Tepei. You it, really do need to find out where... I owe, I owe this woman 12 years of back child support. And, and, and who knows, maybe 13 years if she had a rough pregnancy. I, also, you got to remember, if you've, you got to watch the video. It's mind-blowing. It, it, it's he, he looks like he's about to pee himself. Uh, video footage released by the organizers showed the boy trip over a platform in front of the artwork and then brace himself against the painting to break his fall. He then looked around helplessly before walking away. The child fell and pressed onto the painting, putting a fist-sized tear into it, said the employee at TST Art of Discovery, which organized the Face of Leonardo exhibition. So, thankfully, it says the organi organizers have de decided to not seek damages from the boy's family, according to the China's news agency. And it's not the first time it happened. It said it's happened once. Uh, gaming tycoon Steve Wynn accidentally poked his elbow through the canvas of a $139, $139 million Picasso painting once. Um, <laughs> in 06, a British man smashed a set of 300 euros Chinese vases tripping over his shoelaces. Uh, maybe I'm related to all of them, but wow. There you go, friends. That brings us to the much-waited for, highly revered, and soon to be coming to you if my mouse will work, which is a big if, dunce cap of the month award winner. You're going... People always say you never get to see Christelle. You're going to get to see Christelle. Here we go. Our dum -dee music. Listen, listen. Here it comes. Dum 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 dee. Oh yes, dum dee dum dee dum dee. Latest feminine craze, free bleeding. What does that mean? It means letting your monthly cycle, that be your period for you Usher fans, flow and uh, gush freely down your legs because somehow that supports poor women. And I'm free, free bleeding. Tom Petty, I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> free period bleeding declared a way to transcend male oppression. Yeah, because so many men want women to not have tampons. Every day I hear about millions of men marching so that women don't have tampons. That's, that's, that's high on every man's agenda. Listen to this. Uh, Infowars and People Magazine. People Magazine is celebrating Karan Gandhi for running the London Marathon without a tampon. Now, I'm probably going to have to send this to uh, uh, to uh, MIA. It's the drummer for the band MIA. Who? I don't like hip-hop, but they're actually interesting. I don't mind them so much. They're, they're obviously leftist and strange, but their music's great. 
But that doesn't change the fact that she's an idiot. I'm going to have to either mail this to the record label or possibly People Magazine, most likely the record label, because you can't find any P.O. box for Karan Gandhi. That's because she probably would get more than a nuts cap from most people. Gandhi let her blood flow freely to raise awareness about women who have no access to feminine products and to encourage women to not be embarrassed about their period, writes Char Adams for the Celebrity Gossip Periodical. I ran the whole marathon, and there's a picture of her doing it, with my blood running down my legs. Gandhi, who played drums for the singer MIA and Thievery Corporation, wrote on her website. Listen to this genius. If there's one way to transcend depression, it's to run a marathon in whatever way you want. Pause. Didn't matter if she did this or not. There's one way to transcend depression, and just one. That one way is to run a marathon in a certain way. We go on. Uh, no, no, to run it the way you want. On the marathon course, sexism can be beaten. Where the stigma of a woman's period is irrelevant, and we can rewrite the rules as we choose. So she's going to cheat during the race. Or maybe only women made the rules of the race. Therefore, by adhering to the rules, she's beating the male sexism. I don't know. I do know that uh, is. I don't know that men are stigmatized by a woman's period. They don't want bled on by a woman. I don't bled on by a guy either. Not really. Um, doesn't matter where the blood's coming from. It's still. I'm. I'm good. Um, also, let us remember that. I, I own a tampon machine. It's one of the, my many financial endeavors. I own a tampon machine that's in an adult nightclub. So, I mean, <laughs> this isn't good news for me, I guess. Uh, where's a woman's comfort? If this takes off, I could be bankrupt. Where's a woman's comfort supersedes that of the observer? So it's more comfortable to walk around with a wet crotch than it is. Is it more comfortable to go without a tampon, Christelle? My opinion, no. I, I, according to this bonehead, it is, of course, more comfortable. It, it is, it's cozy to wear what wow. feels like a diaper. I ran with blood dripping down my legs for sisters who don't have access to tampons and sisters who, despite cramping and pain, hide it away and pretend like it doesn't exist. I personally, since I also DJ in an adult club, I would say about... 70% of the women I know, when they're on their period, you know it. Women are always talking about their period. It hurts. It doesn't hurt. Do I look fat? Do I look bloated? Do you have a pair of scissors? Yada, yada, yada. I don't know of women that hide their period very often. I call it just me, and don't say it's just the titty bar because it's been everywhere. When I worked in sales, it never failed. Every other day, some woman would tell you that she was on her period. And if you work in a place where many women are together at the same time quite often, nature will put their periods all at the same time. So that's, that's always a pleasant week to work where I'm at. Um, Melissa Mullins, writing for Government Slaves, put the stunt into context and told Gandhi, now Melissa Mullins is really, really intelligent here. She gets the anti dumb of the day. It seems that the only ones that feel periods are something shameful or embarrassing are girls like you. We aren't in junior high where everything seems embarrassing and are only beginning to learn the human body and its functions. When someone is fully mature, they understand the differences between men and women, except for feminists who think that there is no differences. There's something to be said for someone who allows any bodily fluids to run freely and in view of the public. First, it's downright disgusting and unsanitary. Second, you do nothing to help your cause, but come off as a little dirty and a little mental. So, um, li live uh, listeners on this camera, you're going to want to go high def. High def, I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, thing up that I'm about to read so that you all can uh, see the, the, the winning dunce cap here. Again, uh, HD, there's nothing I can do to help you here, unfortunately. But I'm going to read it in a moment. Now, if you look, the tampons make a smiley face. Oh, yeah. This is going to be sent inside the dunce cap that you're about to see when I'm done reading this. 
And uh, now what have I put in front of me? There we go. Fixed it. Um, listen to this. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This Dunce Cap comes to you, Karan Gandhi, who seems to be as bad at social justice as you are good at drumming. She's a good drummer. Rather than promote the many charities extant today to help assure that women have hygiene-related needs met, I wrote, you decided to run a marathon while free bleeding. With any luck... Poor sick people with HIV will do as you did and spread the virus to even more people. Perhaps if you are copied, then this unhealthy idea can spread like the diseases that this will actually promote. Did it ever occur to you, I ask, to run with logo of a women's health charity on your shirt? No. Which proves that you are dumb enough to win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Um, and Christelle, they always say they never see you. Come on up, Christelle. You can see her. Look at that right there. Now, these are tampons that are on the hat. I'm going to read you the hat in a minute. Christelle has outdone herself with this hat. All right, go head over. You can see her beautifully. Now, when you, when you hold it up, the, the tampons hang down. These, these are colored tampons. Now, we, we, we're concerned... We're concerned, Karan Gandhi. So we've decided, so I told you, I, I told you I owned a tampon vending machine, didn't I? We've decided to make sure you have tampons for at least the very most important days of your life. Uh, this is free bleeding dunce. We have the happy Halloween tampon where you can see the pretty pumpkin. It's free bleeding for all holidays. Oh, yes, it is. Well, again, now you will not have to be free bleeding on the holidays. Here's the happy birthday one. We don't know when your birthday is, but if you notice, it's a pretty little candle and it's burned as flame. We even burnt the top with a lighter for you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Look at that Christmas tree tampon. She, Christelle has done amazing. Um, of course, happy St. Patrick's Day. Do you know how hard it is to draw a clover on a tampon? Extremely difficult. And Quran, we're sorry about that. It doesn't look, we, we really tried. Happy Easter. Of course, the Easter eggs all over. And there's a little whack, whack, little duck there. Happy thanks. Oh, that's not a duck. That's a turkey. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that turkey. She she made the tampon. Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely remarkable. And of course, you can't forget New Year's. Da, 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 da. Happy New Year. What is, what is that? The, the, the black light. What is that? Is that a firecracker? That's for the Y for the year. Oh, the year. The Y. I see. I Friends. Cut, I cut the string in half to make the uh, two parts for the Y. You can't forget the uh, Happy Halloween. That is, I did that one first. You gotta love that. Uh, so, friends, that's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. We're sending this to Karan Gandhi. It might be her label. It might be where we'll find some way to get this to her. Karan, think. Think. That's all we're saying. Just think. You have the ability to raise a lot of money. Don't be an idiot proving a point. Raise the money and help somebody. Bonehead. Uh, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange, you're doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Go to themediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all the time as Christelle breaks the hat that she just made. Now you're getting a dented hat, Karan. Also, um, if you want to donate to the show, thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give towards uh, this show goes towards a better show. I, I, anything I buy related uh, to whatever is never from the money you give me. So if you can help me, please do, because these shows cost a lot more than you think they would in research, gear, three-point lighting, etc., etc. I've bored you to death. Good night, friends. God bless.